I'm Melly, and you're watching a quick video to show you how to incorporate more fruits and vegetables into your diet. Now today, we're going to be making a roasted butternut baby squash stuffed with wild rice sage stuffing and topped with caramelized walnuts. Now that we have our idea for the meal we're gonna make, why don't we hit the market and grab our ingredients? In Seattle, Washington, we're known for our farmer's markets, especially one in particular. Here we are today at the world-renowned historical Pike Place Market, where you can find any fruit or vegetable to please your palate. Now, if you don't live near a farmer's market, there's no need to worry, because you can find all these ingredients at your local grocery store. So now that we're here, are you ready to shop? Because I am. So let's get going. I'm going to start out with our stuffing. Now, a really good stuffing always has really good bread. Now, you can always make your own bread if you're really ambitious, or I went to the store and got mine. I just want to choose bread that has a little bit of a darker color, because darker color means more fiber and more nutrients. So here I have just a regular old piece of bread, and I'm going to chop it in cubes. You can chop it in whatever size cube you like, I like to make them bite size. You can make them a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, whatever you like. And we put in the breadcrumbs. And I like to drizzle about one to two tablespoons of olive oil over them. And then, fun part, you get to get your hands dirty. And you just toss them around. What we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer these to a hot skillet about over medium, medium low fire. You don't want them to burn. You just want them to get a nice golden brown. That'll take about three to five minutes. So here I have two small carrots. You can always use just one large carrot. I have one celery stalk. I have, you can use a small onion or I just used a segment of a large onion. Two garlic cloves. Stuffing is nothing without garlic cloves. And I know you're probably wondering, what are the pears for? They are an excellent contrast to the savoriness of the vegetables. It gives it a little bit of sweetness. Now here I have an Anjou pear. It's a red pear, it's beautiful. They also come in green. This is a Bosque pear. Either one will work. They're really great for cooking because they turn out to be nice and tender. And you want to cut them up in about the same size pieces that you chopped your cubes of bread because you want everything to be about the same size. Now, I like to use red onion because it gives it a nice contrast to the rest of the um, colors of the vegetables. The more colors, the better for presentation purposes and for nutrient purposes. Our vegetables are done. I'm going to take them back over to our chopping area. And now I'm going to grab our bread cubes that we toasted earlier. And this is the easiest, easiest way to make stuffing. We're just going to transfer our vegetables. The next thing we're going to put in is wild rice. Then I have one cup of dry cranberries. So now here I have one cup of vegetable stock. And I'm only going to put in half a cup first. Stir it up. Whoop, runaway bread cube. <laughs> then I'm going to put in the rest. You just want to make sure that you get your breadcrumbs nice and saturated with vegetable stock. I have one and a half tablespoons of sage, one tablespoon of 
sweet fennel seed and I just coarsely chopped it. You can grind it in a, in a little grinder. And I have half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes and just a little bit of salt. And we don't have to do anything to the squash, I'm just going to fill them. So we have our squash all nice and full. And I'm going to get some aluminum tin foil and cover them up nice and tight. All right, we're going into the oven, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. For These will probably take about, I would say, close to an hour to bake. Now we're going to take our butternut squash and plate it. Oh, so beautiful. Mmm, it just melts in your mouth. The savoriness of the stuffing is really complemented by the sweet crunchiness of the walnuts. It's just, it's perfect. It's a perfect dish. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I've had so much fun cooking with you. I hope you've enjoyed cooking with me, and I hope you make this tonight. For this recipe, more of my recipes, or if you want to learn more about me, you can visit my website at www.manjajoya.com.